Hi, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Lectus Training on Sunday Readings. Today, we will prepare for the readings of July 9, the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our References Our reference books say that the first reading may sound familiar to you. It is because it is quoted in the processional gospel for Palm Sunday for year A and year C. This passage is part of a prophetic oracle, the purpose of which is to raise the spirit and give hope to a people oppressed and exploited by foreign powers. It announces the coming of a humble Messiah. To help you in your proclamation, it is suggested that you proclaim this reading with as much joy and hope as you can. If you can show these emotions in your eyes and facial expression, that would be great. Just don't overdo it. Stretch the word see. Asking the people to look far to the future that is. Stress the words used to describe the king and the manner of his arrival. These words. This is cold foal. Stress the word banish and uh, the following underlined words. This is bow. To show that the king will relieve the people of their oppression. Stress the word peace and the underlined words that follow. To express that the king will establish peace and bring to fulfillment his kingdom. Read the last line slowly and stretch the phrases sea to sea and ends of the earth. This describes the vastness of his kingdom encompassing all of creation. Say, Zechariah, Zechariah, Ephraim, Ephraim. Now let's practice with the full text. First reading, a reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass. On a colt, the foal of an ass, he shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm is a fervent prayer of praise for the greatness of the Lord and King, who is great and powerful, yet also gracious and merciful. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will extol you. O oh, my God and King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. 
Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is faithful in all his words and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. In the second reading, St. Paul explains the contrast between the flesh and the spirit. He explains that the sacrament of baptism ushers us into Christian life, a life governed by the Spirit of Christ in us. He explains what this means and what it entails. To help you in your proclamation, our reference books say that throughout the reading, maintain a calm but stern tone. St. Paul is teaching the Romans of their new life in the Spirit and to turn away from their former way of life. He distinguishes clearly between being in the flesh and being in the Spirit. Stress these words to make their differences clear. Emphasize the pronoun you, making eye contact with the people. Follow the commas or and or slashes. Then soften the tone of your voice to communicate the contrast of the spirit dwelling in the person who belongs to Christ. Everything is summed up in the last verse. Read it slowly, putting emphasis on flesh, you will die, and spirit, you will live. This is the essence of the reading. Please say, debtors, the B is not produced, debtors, and uh, say the two S's as one. Now let's practice with the full text. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die but if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The Word of the Lord. From the Alleluia verse, we learn that the wisdom of God is not the wisdom of the Lord, of the world. In the wisdom of God, it is the small and humble who know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Join me again next week for the readings of July 16, the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Until then, goodbye and God bless you all. Again, thank you.